I've been on my birth for a number of years. And I was once at a celebration of one of the Catholic communities way up in the mountains. And it's a bit as much of much Christianity is in places where it arrived in very ancient times, I mean, farther back in Africa, India. But in, in this place in Honduras, where the missionaries have arrived in the 1500s, this particular indigenous tribe called the Lenca Indians, um, they live up in a mountainous area that's full of pine trees. And we don't know how all of this happened, but somehow the missionaries used their head. They have a, for them, the pine tree is sacred. So the missionaries used this, and so on their feast day every year, their big patron feast, they do this wonderful uh, procession through the mountains to the small chapel that was built two or five hundred years ago. And, and, and I participated one day, one day. Here is a marvelous experience. They, they walk for hours carrying these, everybody has to think, almost like Palm Sunday for us, but they all have these pine boughs in their hand. They walk and they're singing and they wave these pine boughs. We walk as you're walking under huge pine trees. And when we finally reach this chapel on the ground, on the floor of the church, it's a very small church, about a temple. There was pine needles all on the floor. Everybody came in with their pine branches. And I was just fascinated by this pine and I didn't know much about the, the history of the celebration. And one of the elderly, what they call Spanish rezador, it's like a, like a shaman almost, what he said. The word means one praise for the community, rezador. He was incensing. The priest was, the priest and I were back and back. This was their celebration. Mass was going to come later, but they were doing all their very ancient rituals. So he's incensing the church and the chapel, and incensing the, the pine boughs. Lots of incense. And then he finished his part, and then he began the mass. So at the very end of the whole celebration, I went up to this old shaman. These are all Catholic Christians, but as, as you see in all these ancient places, there's this wonderful syncretism of the old and, and the new, and this works together beautifully. And I met this elderly man, and I said, he did speak Spanish for a while because his language is his language. And I asked him, I said, I'm very curious just what does the pine tree, the pine needles, the pine boughs represent? Length of people. And you look at me with these big eyes and say, Oh, you don't know. I felt pretty stupid at that moment. But I said, No, but I said, I really would like to. I said, I see how, how central it is to your celebration. And he said to me, He said, Some morning, very, very early, before the sun rises, if you get up and go, Somewhere there's a large pine tree. He said, you just sit at the bottom of the pine tree, up against the pine tree. He said, it has to be before the sun comes up. And he says, you must sit there very, very silently. And listen. Listen very quietly. He said, you will hear the pine tree singing to God. So one morning I got up really early and I went up to the mountains and I did exactly as I told and sat there very quietly listening and I heard the pine tree singing to God. That's not pagan religion. That's our Genesis Everything in creation vibrates with the Word of God. God sent light, God sent water, God sent ground, God sent red, red, and robin, and God sent pine.
pine tree. And everything, everything in our creation, our, our indigenous people know this in their, in their blood, everything vibrates with the energy of God, with the word of God. So the pine trees vibrating with the word of God, and the pine trees' vibrations are music to God, because the pine tree is made through the breath of the word of God. 